Welcome to a Global Village. Uh, we have uh, two guests today from Kant of New York, uh, Anne Marie, counselor from Patricia. Welcome to the program. Thank you. And uh, Tom McNulty, our police chief from the Kant of New York and City of Brooks. Welcome, Tom. Come back to the program. Thank you, Amen. Could you tell us the um, crime rate of compared last year, the first three months to the first three months of 2015? Um, the crime rate, uh, it, it fluctuates up and down year to year. And um, overall, we're slightly below last year in total criminal code uh, events. Um, our assaults are slightly up uh, a, a little bit, in, in, especially in Brooks. Not so much the County of Newell, but in Brooks. But uh, it's still substantially less than um, the average community of our size. Uh, we've done a great deal in the city of Brooks County of Newell over the last number of years to uh, fight the, the crime rate. Um, the city of Brooks found, uh, purchased uh, five or six new policemen in the last five years. Uh, we started a very strong Safe Communities Committee, which we'll talk about uh, in a little bit. Um, and we've come up with some other programs, such as the Domestic Violence Intervention Team, which have all contributed to dropping the crime rate in Brooks and area and uh, making it quite a, quite a safe and happy place to live. Thank you very much, Tom. Uh, Madam Councillor, could you tell us a little bit about yourself? Mm -hmm. I'm, um, I've been a counselor for 10 years and I represent uh, Patricia Millicent Imperial Colony area, mm -hmm. which is northeast of Brooks. And we're um, also including Dinosaur Provincial Park, which is a World Heritage Site. Yeah. Um, it's, uh, Patricia itself is the only hamlet in Division 3 and it has about 95 people that live there. Mm. Wow. And I, yeah, I, I live on a ranch with my, and a farm with my husband, Harry, and we have four kids. They're all grown up, there left go. home. <laughs> there you go. So uh, 95 people, uh, we have some of them uh, work at GPS. Yes. Some of them work at GPS. Uh, from, they come from Patricia. So how far is from Brooks then? It's about a 30-minute drive from Patricia to Brooks. Oh. It's not that far then. It's, it's not bad. It's all paved and good oh. roads to get to Brooks. There you go. So, uh, okay, Tom, could you tell us uh, something? Uh, the um, the public safety. Uh, what is the uh, public safety in terms of the community engagement uh, for the people to be part of safe environment? Well, well the, the definition of public safety is is just that the safe the safety of the public of, of people and, and property and, and and community and if if there's anything that comes to threaten um, the livelihood or safety of, of people or um, environmental hazards such as a tornado or you know that threatens the public safety of the community okay. um, public safety is all wound into into that, whether it environmental or human caused or anything that challenges uh, personal or, or, or uh, property safety. So our job as a police force is to, to minimize the effect of um, hazardous events um, that might affect the community. The one way of the environment, we'll try and we'll try and work with all of the other uh, uh, services in the community to to lessen the impact of flooding or of a tornado or of winds or fire or or what have you. Uh, we'll we'll do the best we can with all of the other services. But as far as criminal activity go, that's pretty much our sole responsibility, um, or the responsibility relies stays with us. But it's really, really important that the community understand that the police can only be as good as the community allows them to be. Okay. The, the people of the community have to assist the police in telling them what's going on. We can't be everywhere and everything to all people. We police most of the county of Newell. 
My detachment goes from uh, the Red Deer River to the Bow River north-south and approximately 140 kilometers east and west up the number one highway. Wow. I may have yeah. three or four members on in that whole area at any given time. So we can't be everywhere. If we have a uh, problem in Patricia or Rolling Hills or Rainier or Sesford, those are all things that we have to go respond to or the city of Brooks. Um, we have to rely on people to assist us. So being uh, a strong member of your community, there's a certain responsibility that goes with that. Okay. If you see domestic violence, it's important that you intervene um, or call people that will intervene. Any, any violence from one person to another is, is unacceptable mm -hmm. and we, we have to intervene. When you see kids picking on other kids, or um, when you know of, well, one of the, the biggest thing that's in the, uh, in the news right now, and especially in Canada, is the radicalization of youth. Yeah. Whether that be criminal gangs or terrorists or, or whatever, we have to protect our youth. And if, if people in the community are aware that a certain segment of the community are trying to go after youth for for um, illegal purposes or problematic purposes or there's a website or there's something it's really important that they come forward and and let us know that so we we have an obligation we have obligation to inform to make sure that the community is living in a safe environment all the time so we have to be participate and if if there is anything that the community is acknowledged, then they have information that they have to share with the authority to make sure that will prevent the, any eventuality that might come. If a lot of people will hesitate to cooperate with the police, um, they don't want to be identified as an informant or there's worse names for that, but. They, and they don't want to be involved in the court process or they don't want to, they just don't want to be involved with the police. So there's Crime Stoppers, um, which is totally anonymous. People can call in uh, to Crime Stoppers or they can um, have somebody else who's willing to talk to us, give us a call. Somehow, if you if you want to make your community safer somehow you have to get the information to the police or to a service that provides um, uh, to a service provider that uh, can help and it if people complain about their community and don't do anything about it I don't feel sorry for them if you want to participate and you want to make it a happy community, a better community, there's lots and lots and lots of groups that are looking for volunteers. The police are always looking for information to, to solve crime, um, safe communities. The County of Newell Council will always accept information to make their county better. Um, all of us will. So yes, there's a responsibility to step forward and give your opinion in a respectful, professional manner. The bottom line is step up on the plate and make sure that we live in a safe and vibrant community. Mm -hmm. So in order for us to live in a safe and vibrant community, we all participate. That's right. Thank you very much. I think that's a very good point, and I think most of our community share the same view, and those who don't, I think they hear from our police chief, and. We need to live in a safe community for our children, for our family. We need to participate. That's the bottom line. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, thanks, uh, Tom. Uh, did you just see, could you be able to uh, tell us, for example, the um, you've been with the council for 11, 10 okay. years? Okay. The, uh, e the economic development, for example, uh, of, of the area. What is the advantage, you think, of having a uh, more diverse people? into the into our new region mm -hmm. uh, in terms of economic growth and a diverse community um, in the county of newell means the oil and gas the, the farming the ranching yeah. um, and also different stores 
different um, opportunity for business mm -hmm. and it also means a diverse community because of different cultures that we have mm -hmm. and economic development through the county of New Orleans through the city of Brooks because mm -hmm. they have a partnership yeah. means that you have to support yeah. uh, the cultures and the different businesses and and have an, an open environment for them to to grow as a business and to attract new businesses into the county. That's, and I think both Kant of New York and the city of Brooks, I think doing great for that, I think economic uh, development, mm -hmm. though now it has been changed to a share services. It, it used to be a shared service, but with a committee, with uh, different people throughout uh, the county on that committee, and now the, um, um, direction for economic development comes from joint services and that is the city of Brooks, it is the county of Newell and the smaller communities are always included in whatever decisions we make because what's good for the county is good for the city, what's good for the city is good for the smaller communities like Dutchess and Rosemary and Bazano. Yeah, and I think Tilly is now ham hamlet. Right? Tilly is a hamlet. Oh, okay. yeah. It used to be a village before. Yes. Okay, yeah. with Tom uh, I think uh, he's been a mayor for a long time, uh, John Timko. John Timko is the mayor of Tilly. Yeah, yeah, for a long time. So they don't have a mayor now then? No, they don't. They're, they're a hamlet, just like Patricia and Rolling Hill, so they're part of the county of Newell. But they do have a hamlet advisory committee, mm -hmm. which is made up of people that live in Tilly, and they will advise the county on, on what they would like to see in their, in their hamlet. Mm, good for them. I think they make a good choice. Mm -hmm. Uh, if Patrice is Hamlet, so Tamlet, yep. then Tilly is Hamlet. So what's good for uh, Tilly or Patrice is good for Brooks, and what's good for Brooks, I think the good for the county. Yep, we're yes. one, one big region and we have common goals. It, it only makes sense to work together. There you go, and, and, and I think you guys are doing a great job. Yeah, Tom, could you tell us the level of the different law enforcement in Canada? Uh, the, the, the different law enforcement levels in Canada. Um, we go from federal, we've got th four main uh, levels. We've got federal, provincial, municipal, um, actually three, just the, the three. So at the federal level, uh, the two, the, the main law enforcement uh, entity in, in Canada is the RCMP. We take care of uh, national security, um, all of the federal statutes such as uh, the Immigration Act, uh, passport uh, documents, um, mm. uh, copyright, uh, drugs, um, all of the, the federal yeah. statutes. Then we have uh, the provinces are all responsible for the policing of the province. Uh, so we have the provincial police forces. Yeah. Um, in two, in Ontario and Quebec, they have their own provincial police forces. Yeah, OBP. The o Ontario Police uh, and the Sûreté du, du Québec. Yeah. Um, in all other provinces in Canada, they have contracted to the RCMP to supply that uh, level of policing. Uh, then, the then the municipalities, for, such as the city of Brooks, mm. is responsible for their policing. So they have the option. Um, of having their own police force or contracting to another police force to deliver that service and the city of Brooks chooses to deliver to contract with the uh, RCMP to um, deliver that service. Then the city of Brooks also hires their own, as does the, the county of Newell, uh, community peace officers. So they don't have quite the authority um, and investigative powers that a uh, full-fledged RCMP police officer does. They can enforce some provincial laws and all of the county or city bylaws, who, whoever hires them. Um, but they're not a full-fledged police officer. They're, they are a peace officer. And then involved in all of those, we have all sorts of others. So we have the fish and wildlife people who are provincial employees they um, it, the, the, they're armed and they are police officers under certain statutes uh, provincial statutes okay. uh, the Fish and Wildlife and, and Gaming Act uh, we have sheriffs who uh, are provincial employees 
who do a lot of different stuff. Their, their highest profile is traffic enforcement, but they also do a lot of uh, prisoner uh, escorts. They, uh, they're part of the alert team, the Alberta uh, Law Enforcement Response yep. Team. Um, they are responsible for personal protection for the Premier and um, um, other v VIPs in the province. Wow. Um, and I'm sure there's a bunch of others that I'm not mm -hmm. talking about. Yeah. Then we have CSIS, which everyone yeah. is the Canadian uh, Securities Intelligence yeah. Services. Service. Yeah. CSIS. CSIS. But they're not a law enforcement agency, they're an intelligence agency. Yeah. So they don't, um, they don't enforce the law, they um, gather intelligence for the government. Wow, that's a that's, uh, length of, I think, uh, education for many people, I'm sure. Uh, that will lead me to uh, the other question, which is the safe communities that we have in Brooks and Count of Newell. You want to touch base on that one? The Safe Communities Committee? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, under provincial legislation, the, uh, the provincial government wants to set up, they had the police committee. Um, which is a, a committee predominantly for larger communities which will give advice um, or act as the liaison between the police and the um, elected officials. Okay. In Brooks, we switched it from the police committee to the Safe Communities Committee, which is also part of the legislation, mm -hmm. about three years ago and invited the County of Newell to be part of that. So sitting yeah. on the Safe Communities Committee is a councillor from the County of Newell and a councillor from the city yeah. of Brooks, myself, um, two staff members from the city of Brooks, and then members at large who um, are just people from the community who wants to participate. And Marie was one of the councillors that participated in the Safe mm -hmm. Communities Committee up until a short time ago when she switched out. But it's um, the purpose of the committee is to identify issues in the community um, so anywhere in the county or anywhere in the city of Brooks, um, talk about those issues, identify ways that we can um, deal with those issues through it, uh, through education, through environment, or through enforcement, and come up with a plan to to make a difference. Uh, whether it, you know, one of the things that we took on over the past year was crosswalk safety. Mm -hmm. Um, we've done a number of videos on that, uh, which are on YouTube and they'll be playing elsewhere. But we've um, put up a lot of uh, crosswalk signs, mm -hmm. um, which the crosswalks at Brooks are pretty, yeah. um, pretty identifiable mm -hmm. now. Yeah. Um, the Halloween program? We've done a Halloween safety program mm -hmm. where we gave out bags um, and advice to kids where we talked to all of the kids in all of the schools up to grade five, I believe. Mm -hmm. Wow. Um, and that's with the police and educators and, and Alberta Health um, promotions. Um, we, do, we do a lot of work with the Safe Communities Committee. And we're looking for people to, to participate. Nice. Right now, I think we've got as many vacancies as we do board members. So if anyone that's listening to this or is interested at all, please contact City Hall or, uh, or the county and, and put your hand up and say that you'd like to participate with the Safe Communities Committee. Anyone is welcome. Thank you, uh, uh, Tom. And I think Lisa was supposed to be the contact person for the city and the county. I think she's going for maternity leave. So. Uh, uh, what do you call Tony? I believe Tony Diap. Is Tony Tony mm -hmm. will probably be the contact person for that program, so people can get in touch with Tony, and I'm sure he's a wonderful guy to uh, to give them the directions how they're going to join. But that's a very good, wonderful, and I think you won a award. But I think that's the other organization that won the award award for the uh, for the provincial award. Is that's the um, not the safe community? That's the uh, domestic violence. Domestic one. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's uh, that's the one that won the. Uh, our, uh, th thanks, uh, Tom. The uh, the city municipality of Brooks and the municipality of uh, Count of New will have a very good solid relationship, which uh, can be a good model for other parties of Alberta or Canada. Mm -hmm. uh, could you tell us how that collaboration came into light? Because uh, that's a lot of people asking. It's a very 
good model cooperation between the two. Mm -hmm. Is that something uh, that you guys work out? Uh, how uh, that? We we started talking. Mm -hmm. Communication is the main thing, and you, we all have common goals. Yeah. So rather than being territorial, we just discussed what can we do together, how can we save money. Mm -hmm. We all serve the same group of people. Mm -hmm. And there's a lot of issues that we have in common. And uh, fire uh, services would be one of them. The water that we worked on is one of them. Safe communities is a good example. Economic development is a good example. There, There's just a, a lot of common goals mm -hmm. and it only makes sense to talk about it. Doesn't mean that you always agree. But if your long-term goal is to find a solution that works, then you'll uh, work through those disagreements. There you go. If you agree all the time, then there is something wrong somewhere. Mm. You have to agree and disagree sometime for any issue to be improved further. So uh, sometimes people also are not aware that JBS is the territory of the county. They sometimes think JBS is within the city That's of right. Brooks territory. But if you look at the map, uh, they are located a little bit outside the territory of, yeah. of the of the Brooks. And, and a lot of people that work at JBS live in, live Brooks. in Brooks. Very much, yeah. very high yeah. percentage live in Brooks. Yeah. And then we have the Eastern Irrigation District that also um, serves the same people in the same area. So we need oh. to work with them. It's it, m Most of it is just common sense. There you go. And I think you guys are doing a very great job for that cooperation. I think some of the municipalities in Alberta that uh, I have seen and they always talk about the good cooperation between the city of Brooks and the county of Newell have built it. So we hope to to, uh, uh, to improve further and then see the whole region is promotion in, in the long, you know, long many years to come. Mm -hmm. uh, Tom, yeah, would you be able to tell us, for example, if uh, somebody would like to join the RCMB, what is the procedure like, for example, especially the, those who are listening today, if they wish to join the police force, whether the RCMB or? Um, the process to, First of all, I, I would encourage anyone to go online to the RCMP website and, and to have, have a look. Or come down to our office and talk to us and, and kind of understand what being a Mountie, being an RCMP member um, is, is like compared to a police officer. A police officer in Medicine Hat Police Service doesn't ever have to move. Um, they're, they're in Medicine Hat forever. Um, I've been in the Mounties for 33 years now, and I've had 10 different moves. Um, so we, we move around a lot. Five things that we have to have before you could even consider uh, being a Mountie is a Canadian, you have to be a Canadian citizen. You have to be willing to move anywhere in Canada, and that could be right inside the Arctic Circle to Newfoundland to New Brunswick. Nova Scotia, and in between, Northern Manitoba, Brooks, Alberta, Vancouver, go. anywhere mm -hmm. in between. Mm -hmm. You have to be able or willing to be trained and um, accept the use of force, a deadly force. Um, we do carry a gun, and you have to be willing to accept that. Um, there's, you know, some religious uh, or religions don't yeah. allow that and stuff. You have to have a, a clear uh, and valid driver's license. Um, those are the th those are the main ones, and then we have to go through a security check. You have to be of sound character. Okay. You know, you can't just come out of jail and join the police force. <laughs> um, so we'll do a complete security background check. There's an examination uh, uh, an yeah, exam to to go through. Yeah. Um, there's a polygraph test. Um, the whole process takes about a year to do. Okay. No, that's good. If I have an international driving license, would I be able to drive? Uh? If you're a temporary, um, a temporary resident or visitor to Canada and you have two pieces of paper from your home country, one saying that this is an international license and the other one that gives you the, the permission to drive in your home country, then yes. But as soon as you have a permanent address in Canada, you're expected to get a Canadian driver's license. Everything also depends on your insurance. So more important than your driver's license is your insurance. If you're driving down the road, 
you have to be properly insured. So insure and make sure that your insurance recognizes your driver's license. There you go. But driving with uh, learner's permit, that's out of the question. Driving with a le learner's permit, the class seven, you must have a fully um, a full class five right beside you okay. and supervising you. There you go. So I hope people will be uh, listening because that is the uh, uh, regulation is and the law. And I think that if that is for everybody. Uh, if you have class seven, then you need somebody with uh, class G, I believe. Class five. Class five, yes. Yeah, that be sitting on your side. If no one is there, then you cannot drive. You're right. What about the GDL? A GDL is a, uh, the graduated driver's license. Once you pass your, your driver's test, which gives you a class five GDL, then you have, then you can drive within the limitations of that. So some GDLs, you can't drive after dark, you can't have any alcohol at all. Um, you, some GDLs, you can't have passengers. Uh, there's stipulations on your graduated driver's license that you have to adhere to. So if it says you can't drive after dark, don't drive after dark. So if it says no alcohol, then there's no alcohol. Okay, so whatever the condition is on the GDL is, that's what you yes. have to obey. Yes. No, that's, that's a good information, I think, and that will bring to our conclusion. I thank you very much, Madam Consular. I thank you and the uh, count colleagues and the consulars are doing a great job. Uh, for providing the county region and we hope to see more that in the near future and this was your first time and I, we hope to invite you next time so you will probably feel more comfortable next time <laughs> so welcome again and thank you very much for taking the time to come to the global village show my pleasure thank you thank very you. much and thanks tom as always i think i will take that offer and come and you show me how to uh, play the hockey as a newcomer, I just don't like falling on this on that uh, ice, <laughs> but so I will take the challenge. You need to learn to skate first. Okay, there then you we'll go. Then we'll play hockey. There you go. <laughs> Let's start that one. Thank you very much, Tom, for coming and that information. This is the end of uh, Global Village Show today. Uh, we uh, take the opportunity to thank uh, the continuous support from the account of Newell, uh, City of Brooks, and Medicine at College. Uh, this is where East meets uh, the West. Thank you very much again for joining, and I hope you will join us next time. Until then, God bless everyone, and have a good one. This is Ahmed Kasim, your host of the program. <laughs>